In 2010, um, I got into a place where I just really wanted to get out, get out of Sydney, Australia, where I was living. I was getting involved with a group of friends that were doing some unethical things. I could just see myself spiraling a little bit and um, wasn't very happy with the studies that I was doing at university. I was in a program um, streamlined to lead me to become a clinical psychologist but I quickly recognized as an 18 year old, it's like, I do not have the skills yet to help someone work with their mental health. Um, and I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. Um, and so in my second year of university, I moved to New Zealand um, and I changed into a neuroscience program and again, streamlined to do an honors um, year and then head into master's PhD, that kind of research stream. And one of my uh, lecturers in neuroscience was just so amazing, um, so kind and clear, and was working in a field that I found a particular interest in, in neurodegener neurodegenerative disorders. So looking into Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and research about how can we stop this. And so my honors year was going to be doing a um, small mini project that was part of this bigger um, project that he was working on, where uh, my task was going to be to um, they were like breeding little rats with with a um, a gene or some kind of malfunction that they thought might be similar to something um, around Parkinson's, and then um, we would take the little baby rats and decapitate them, um, and then I would um, test their brains to see um, whether by if this one gene or whatever it was, I can't remember exactly now, this one change was mimicking the known changes in the brain for Parkinson's that they see in humans. And you know, there's a big sell on, on research like this because of the potential benefit that it has for humans. Um, but a few months, you know, I signed up for this, I was all set to go, and then I started having nightmares. Um, and I one nightmare, um, which was kind of the clincher for me, was when I was hacking off the heads of Labrador puppies and their heads were kind of like hanging on just by some skin. And I woke up, I'm like, I cannot do this. <laughs> I cannot kill, I cannot take life. I can't be responsible for like literally having to breed these animals, kill them myself and do this research. Um, yeah, and it was a bit of a shock for me because I was like, whoa, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> Um, I, yeah, because I had been for years kind of going in that direction and, and I could see the benefit of it, but this other aspect of my mind was, was putting up, hey, what is, like, what are you thinking? What are you doing? Um, and so I pulled out of the honors program um, and I took a year off and I worked in a nursing home because um, I thought maybe I'll go into nursing. Um, that wasn't quite the path that I went, but that's a different story. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so this was the first time, um, and a bit before that, I, I'd become vegan when I was 18. My parents were away, I went to, I was living at home on my own, and then went to spend some time with my aunt and uncle. My parents were traveling, and I started reading just about you know how our food is produced and how the impact it has on animals and, and different things. And, and you know, I grew up with every meal basically having revolving around meat, um, very traditional English type of food that my mother would cook. Um, but yeah, so I, I learned about this, like, oh, I don't want to participate in that. Um, so I went vegetarian. I think that was also part of the fuel for pulling out of my honors year in neuroscience was like, I'm vegetarian, yet I'm going to kill animals for this research. So. I started seeing these uh, inconsistencies within myself, um, where I was you know, acting in one way, having the beliefs like this, and then going, hmm, and then trying to bridge that gap. Um, and so reflecting on this recently, uh, it was a time when I was trying to um, grow these two mental factors that are um, these parts of the mind that are mentioned again and again in the Buddhist teachings that I found very helpful, and that's of integrity and consideration for others. And integrity is a mental factor, a state of mind, where we 
don't want to, um, we want to act according to our values so that we feel good about ourselves or out of respect for ourselves. I am not going to do this because I value ethical conduct um, or different aspects. Um, and consideration for others is that we refrain from engaging in negativity um, out of consideration of how our negative actions would impact others. Um, I don't want to kill, steal, lie, or engage in sexual misconduct and so forth because of how it would affect the minds of others. And uh, I really wish that I had have learned about these two mental factors when I was very young. I think that would have saved a lot of messes and a lot of pain, both in myself and others. Just a way, a guideline of like, you know, um, think, what, like Venerable mentioned in the, in the teachings we've seen the last few days, what we do matters. What we do has an impact on how we think about ourselves, our unhappy or happy state of mind. What we do impacts others in terms of um, either directly harming them or indirectly harming them by causing um, disturbance to their minds when they see us acting badly or engaging in ways as like, what are you doing? Or, and I'm pretty sure we all have in our own experience where we've seen others acting in unethical ways and it does um, disturb our minds or harm us in some way. Um, and as I mentioned at the start, my reason for wanting to uh, get out of Sydney was also getting involved in a group of friends that were um, drinking, drugging, um, behaving in certain ways that's like, whoa, if I stay here, I can, I'm just gonna keep spiraling. Um, yeah, so what we do matters, and, and to see that you know, our, our actions do have an ethical value. Um, and so we can cultivate these two uh, states of mind, integrity and consideration for others, so that we can um, live in a way where we have integrity, where we are uh, confident within, I have these values, and the way that I walk through the world actually reflects that. And I can have self-confidence based on that. Um, I think self-confidence, again, like what is, what's the source of that? Um, I think until I started uh, learning the Buddha's teachings, it was based on how I look. It was based on how I can perform in any activity at all, really. Um, it was based on social status, how much money I have, so forth. And all those things are very unstable um, and not actually a reflection of hmm, qualities, actually. Um, important qualities about what do we bring into the world and benefit others and, um, yeah. So, um, reflecting on this, I think it's how we make decisions in our life can be guided very well by coming back to these two mental factors of integrity and consideration for others in terms of what we eat, what we wear, what career choices we make, what friends we choose to be with. Um, every aspect of our life um, and the decisions we make in it can be guided by integrity and consideration for others and linked to that just in, in, in general, like, you know, our ethical conduct. Um, and in that way, um, we can feel at peace within ourselves. I think there's, when we feel um, not at ease with ourselves, it's often because we might have these values, um, but we're not living in accord with them. And that hypocrisy is one way to, to phrase it, or just that, a disjunct um, can be a source of uh, mental dis-ease or pain that um, until we really look at that, um, it's not very pleasant. Um, I think living with integrity and consideration for others also requires courage um, and, the w and a willingness to go into the unknown. Uh, I think one of the early go-arounds that we had just introducing ourselves to each other here, um, someone mentioned not wanting, wanting to be very conscious, to live more consciously and not just go along with um, how things are just flowing. Um, in my own experience, there can just be a flow where um, you know, life doesn't stop. 
we just keep going and then we can be on a track based on various factors of um, what our parents would like us to do, what our friends are doing, what society expects of us, normal career trajectories, various things where we're just in a stream. And if we don't uh, take time to really check in with ourselves of what do I believe, what do I value, um, what is gonna be the outcomes of these choices that I'm making, then we can get ourselves into a place where we're not very happy, we don't really know who we are, and um, our agency isn't really engaged. Um, whereas Buddhist psychology and the Buddhist teachings, um, whether we're Buddhist or not, provide us with a framework to really look inside and discern our values, um, our ethics, and to be more conscious about the decisions that we're making in terms of, you know, is this going, is this, depending on what decision I make, will this allow me to live with integrity and consideration for others? Will this allow me to um, increase my love, compassion, wisdom, my ability to benefit others? Or will it put me into a situation where I'm going to be compromising my values and then potentially live with a lot of, a lot of inner turmoil? I could have, just continued on into that honors project. It was already already in flow almost. I was so close to beginning it. Um, but then there would have been, I think, a lot of inner turmoil around the killing that I would have been involved in with a very uncertain benefit that was coming from it. Because when I pulled out, my supervisor was really tried to sell me on the benefit. Um, but it's very, and I, and I, I know that many of the drugs that I have taken have been the result of animal testing. And I, re I receive the benefit of that. Um, but my personal involvement in that, um, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't do that and live at peace. I think there are alternative ways that we can also test for things or develop for things that minimize as much as possible the harm to other living beings. Another example of um, in this reflection I've had was just when I decided to stop drinking. Um, I wasn't, um, when I moved to New Zealand, I was involved in, in um, a group where people wouldn't get drunk, but there's a, just a big, you know, wine and beer culture in New Zealand. Um, boutique wineries and beers are just all over the country. It's part of the tourism there. It's part of one of the big exports. And when I started practicing, there was a moment I was like, hmm, I'm trying to develop wisdom and I'm taking substances that are dulling me. Like even if I'm not getting drunk. I, was, I remember one time at Christmas, I was with my family and I was trying to learn how to knit. And it was maybe, I had like um, a really uh, very light beer um, at about 11 o'clock, you know, you start early on Christmas. <laughs> and, and I was trying to move the needles and my motor skills from one beer were impaired. I'm just like, I can't do this. <laughs> And I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? Or even on a small task, it's like, if I'm trying to grow wisdom and clarity, um, why am I taking substances that revert me from my state where I already am, let alone moving forward? <laughs> but everyone who was around me, friends and family, it was built into the culture. It was built into what we did when we went out to their house every Sunday. Um, and thankfully, by chance, actually, when I went to Teachings by His Holiness in Sydney in 2013, he offered refuge in the five precepts um, to the crowd of 10,000 people that were there on one of the big auditoriums. And it was such a relief to take that and have that um, solid vow that I had taken on precepts saying, no, oh, I'm not gonna do that because I, I've taken the five precepts, I'm not drinking anymore. Um, yeah, it was just a relief to be able to live in accord with my values um, and to feel supported by that decision and also um, a tradition and a group of practitioners and the Buddha supporting me in that decision, that clarity, that integrity that I could then have um, and no longer feel um, like I should just do it to be part of the group. Um, 
but it, it, it also then changed a bit of my trajectory in that group and in my family where I was you know, slightly um, pulling away from certain activities, um, but in a good way, actually. Um, yeah, so I encourage uh, all the young adults here, particularly, to um, really take the time to investigate the decisions that you're making and the trajectory that they're pushing you into um, or the, how the, the flow of those decisions and what impact that will have for yourself and for others. And to be courageous, to be willing to go into big unknowns. Um, you know, For myself, I was like, I had no idea what was gonna come next pulling out of that um, academic program. And the university that I transferred to was very not happy with me pulling out of an, because they credited all my study done at the Australian University into my New Zealand University because I was gonna do my honors year. And when I pulled out, they're like, you're doing what? Because <laughs> there's a lots of money in honors years and the research and so forth. But I knew that that wasn't something I could do. And so I went into the unknown and it was, um, in my opinion, turned out very well. Um, and I think benefited, benefited many more beings than in a very vast vision than I would have if I had have just gone with the flow. Um, 